Okay, one, two, one, two. How are we doing, wonderful um, musicians? Put a question mark there because sometimes I don't think that I'm a musician. Um, how is it going? Liam Taylor Guitar here, coming to you on all of the platforms, even Mixer for now. Uh, R.O.P. Mixer. Um, right, okay. We We have a plan. It's a good plan. And th there's no way it could possibly go stupidly wrong. Um, plan for today is that I'm going to share a whole big pile of music production tips and tricks that I've acquired over the last, I don't know, man, 10 years? Yeah. Like, I've not actively pursued getting better at Cubase, but I do pretty much know what I'm doing. Um, so I've got a bunch of tips that are specific to Cubase. Well, we've got four post-its worth. That's good value, isn't it? Um, some specific to Cubase, some about music composition or production in a more general sense. So you're going to get something out of this stream. Uh, I'm not really going to worry too much about making a piece of music, but if we happen to make a piece of music, well, that's just lovely. So uh, we have some instruments here already well not instruments we have some uh we have four instances of contact pulled up so what i'm going to do is create a drum track i'm going to let that load while i title this drum track i'm also going to be really careful to write down the timestamps at which i do each of these things uh that's on a funk setting that is fine uh we're also going to want I fixed my issue with contact because I'm a genius. I had to reinstall everything, man. It took ages. Uh, I like the Scarby J bass with uh, both pickups. My favorite. I think it sounds really good. Uh, bass. Uh, just thought of an extra tip. Amazing. Um, mm, 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 mm. What else do we need? Oh, I don't know, man. Let's find a nice synth. That's a nice synth. Synth. And then keys, I guess. Uh, vintage organs, they're quite nice. Yeah, screw it. Organ. I'm going to put that there. Um, I suppose that's one piece of advice already, isn't it? Let me let me put some images in here just to help illustrate the point a little more. Um, base. Where's a base image? Organ. I would draw bar that'll do. And synth. What a nice one for synth. Oh, that'll do. I'm going to change the drum kit to that one. Um, sorry, I'm writing down timestamps. Uh, so it's easy to repurpose this content. Because it's all about repurposing these days. Um, so... First piece of advice, instruments I like to have always in this order. Drums at the top, bass, then anything playing keys or chords. Mm, try that again because I screwed up the word, didn't I? This is how I like to arrange my tracks from top to bottom. Drums at the very top, then bass, then anything playing chords, and then anything playing leads or vocals. I like having them that way. That's just the way I'm used to having them. Um, if I was used to doing it the other way, then I'd be used to that, but I'm not. And I like doing it this way, just so any time I need to quickly find, oh, there's something wrong with the percussion track, it, percussion is probably going to be somewhere between the drums and the bass, or there's something wrong with that counter melody, that's either going to be in the chord section or the synth section or a track in between the two. So whatever project I do, I like to have it top to bottom, drums and percussion, bass instruments, keyboards chords guitars that kind of thing and then leads and vocals at the very bottom that's just how i like to do it 
That was 12 minutes in. You're welcome. Off to a great start. Um, where do I want to start? Where do I want to start? That mm, Some of these kind of require having a piece of music ready to go. So maybe... Um, okay, so let's, let's write a drum part just to get started. And that's going to be something we can use throughout this piece. So... Uh, let's change the tempo as well, just because it's more fun that way. There we go, 131. Uh, maybe on hi-hat. We'll offset the hi-hat ever so slightly. Oops. Nice. And we'll do four of them. And we'll change it up in this section. Loud aeroplane, you can enjoy that. Dong, I think. Cool. And we'll go maybe open there to begin with. Cool. So we're going to loop that. Um, and we're going to add a additional drum kit. Uh, we're going to go for a battery kit because that kind of better illustrates the point I want to make about layering snares. Uh, that tip is to layer snares. Not wanting to give the entire game away. If battery ever loads, that is. Come on, you can do it. There we are. Uh, let's pick any kit. They're all good. I mean, not that one. Any other kit, maybe. That'll do. Um, so let's have... Hmm. What should we do? So this was the same, except up to that, that last bar. I think that's right, isn't it? Yeah, that looks about right. Oops. Cool. Uh, so let's hear these two drum kits together. Oops. Okay, so let's call this electric kit and acoustic kit. Good. And let's change that to sample pads. Amazing. Um, so let me find my piece of paper. 17. So, great piece of advice for really thick and full sounding drum kits, layering snares. You've probably heard this one already, but let's try it in, uh, let's actually try it out. So we've got one snare sound, and we've got a secondary snare sound, which is a little more, little flimsier. Together they sound like this. So what we're going to do to start with is we're going to copy these snares, and we're going to... What other snare sounds have we got? It's not a lot to that one. That one's okay. 
That's a nice one. That's a nice false sounding one. So we'll have that, but we're actually going to put that ever so slightly ahead of this other one so they don't happen at the same time. I'm then going to select every other snare and I'm going to choose a different snare to a layer like that one, for example, and I'm going to put that one slightly behind. Now, what's cool about using different snare sounds is it gives it a little, little more variety. It's a little bit more interesting to listen to. I'm also going to add those snares here as well. So altogether we have this. You hear how it just feels a bit more full, a bit more lively, and it's, I don't know, it's a little more fun. We're allowed to have fun, that's okay. So next piece of advice I want to give, we're just going to blitz through these. Um, yeah, ghost drum kits. This is a really fun one. Um, do we have the same? Yeah, those are playing more or less the same thing, aren't they? I'm going to slow it down a bit because it's maybe a little bit on the fast side. There we go. I'm also going to change the color of these kits to make them a little easier to see. There we go. Um, that one's a bit too much. Yeah, better. Okay, let's make these bigger as well. Amazing. So, let me write down the time. Amazing. Here's a piece of advice called Ghost drum kits or ghost ambience. It's got a few different names. We have two drum kits. We have an acoustic kit and an electro kit. Let's hear them together. They're not playing exactly the same thing, but it's really very similar. I think the acoustic kit has an open hi-hat here and there, and it's playing twice as many hi-hats. The electro kit is obviously an electro kit and is playing a few different snare sounds and the snares are layered. What we're going to do is take the acoustic kit and we are going to put that. Uh, that's kind of. Mm, no, I'm going to approach that from a different angle, actually. So. Ghost ambient for hmm, <laughs> ghost ambience for drum kits. Here we have a pretty normal drum beat. Nothing revolutionary pretty standard electronic kit. What I've done is made a very similar pattern on an acoustic drum kit. It sounds like this. Other than being a different set of samples, I've changed the pattern ever so slightly. The hi-hat happens twice as often. It's got a drum fill at the end and an open hi-hat at the start. Together, they sound pretty good. What I'm going to do is take the acoustic drum kit and I'm going to put a bunch of reverb on it. Uh, let's go for a standard uh, short plate reverb. There we go. But I'm going to turn the mix up all the way. I am also going to put a bit of an EQ on it and we're going to get rid of some of the low end. So the result is it's going to sound like the reverb of the electronic kit is coming from a slightly different drum kit. So, well, I mean, it is. It sounds like this. Now, that's not going to work because of the, uh, the amount of pre-delay. So let's turn down the pre-delay and have another listen. What's interesting is that we, we sort of combine it into one sound. We sort of assume because we can hear a dry sound and a reverby sound, they're coming from the same place. It has an interesting effect where, of course, we know that's, that's not what I've done at all. But it sounds cool. It's called Ghost Ambience for drum kits. Cool. That was a nice one. Um, let's... Should I do one more for drums? Yeah. 
Uh, so I don't know what to call this exactly. Um, I don't know where I wrote it on my things. Either. Oh, there we go. Okay, so 23, 30. Cool. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this drum kit. So I have an electronic drum kit here. Uh, what I want to do is I want to send it. I don't want to send it. I have an electronic drum loop here and I want to make it sound a little little crunchier, a little bit more interesting. And actually, I want to change the pattern a bit just because I'm a bit bored of hearing that same loop. Let's slow it down a bit more. Yeah, let's create something new. Um, let's put these off. Yeah, that's quite nice. We'll use that. And then we'll duplicate. Let's have a listen. Okay, so we have a drum loop. I want to add a little bit of kind of analog, vintage kind of dirt and crust. I, I don't know what that's called. I want to add some crust to it. I'm going to do that by, uh, rather than just adding a crusty dirt making plugin, I'm actually going to use a send. Now the downside of using a plugin to achieve this kind of thing is that often you can't turn the effect off. Well, you can automate it off, but that's why would you do? There's an easier way. Okay, let me show you. So we are going to make a effect track. We want it to be stereo. There we go. And we're going to send. Oh, no, we're not going to do that bit yet. We've made an effect track. We are going to, for the moment, we're just going to send. Actually, yeah, we're just going to send that at minus four to this effects track. And the effect track is going to have the isotope vinyl plugin, a free plugin, I believe. Quite nice it's got a bit of crust on it but the problem is when i hit stop that effect's still there it's not ideal is it so what we're going to do instead i'm going to turn that off because that's going to drive me nuts we are going to rather than sending it we're going to send it through a gate so we're going to put a gate after the isotope plugin on the effect send dynamic gate there it is now, we need this to be a side chain. So what that means is in our original drum kit instrument, we are going to go to our sends, and our send is going to be to the side chain of that effect plugin. I'm going to put that to zero. So when we play the drums, you can see it's recognizing that. What we want is we want the gate to activate whenever we have a hit but we want it to turn off when there's no sound. Makes sense, right? So at the moment, if I play it, it's going green, so that's about right. Let's even this out a little bit. Cool, so then let's put this effect in. So now you can see that this effect is generating sound, but we're not hearing it, which is great. So what happens if we play it? We're only hearing the crusty thun noise when the electro kit is generating sound and sending it to the uh, side chain of the noise gate. So the noise gate is turning on and off according to the level that it's receiving from the drum kit track. We 
which is pretty nifty. Right, that's that one. What else shall we do? I think we need a few more instruments, really, don't we? In order to... Uh, yeah, let's add a few more instruments. So I'm gonna I'm gonna delete that send. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm just gonna. No, I'll delete it. I'll make another empty one, which we'll use later. Um, so we've got a drum kit. Let's add a bass. Right, let's come up with a bass line. quite nice. Um, oh, additional tip. Fifty. Here's a tip. If you want to save a bit of time when you're creating a piece of music, you don't need to... Hmm. What's the best way to approach this? I'm not bad at going off script. Hmm. I'm not bad. I'm not good. See? That's a prime example. So let's say you have a drum kit and a bass line and you want to build chords. You can save a little bit of time by just copying the bass line into whatever is playing your chords. You probably want to stick it up an octave and add a fifth to it. Yeah, it's only fifths, but it's a good start, right? It saves you a bit of time. And actually, you can duplicate those again. And that's a good starting point for your chords. That's wrong, isn't it? Uh, maybe it's that. There it is. So rather than having to put all of your chords in again, build them from scratch, it just saves. Well, it saves a lot of time, actually. There you go. Uh, so that's our chord pattern. Um, I'm going to do another additional additional t tip. 31, 30. Making good time. Can I change the name of that? No. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do just for the sake of uh, my insanity, is create that under the name Organ. There we go. So let's say you have a four-bar repeating phrase. And it just goes round and round, and it's quite nice, but there's no sense of overall direction. You can make things feel way more triumphant by... Well, let me show you. We're going to take... Uh, let's say from this second repeat, from a bar, from the third bar here, we're going to take all of these notes and we're just going to shove them an octave higher. We're then going to take these notes and then we'll take this A sharp as well and put it there. So I'm not really thinking much in terms of music theory. I'm not thinking about what uh, particular voicings of chords we have here. They're inversions of some kind, but I don't need to know anything other than that. All I need to know is that we have an upwards motion in the chord. So now we have this. Which is a way, way different uh, emotional impact, which is really fun. So yeah, your chord choice is important and the types of chords you use is important. But actually, you can change a lot about how a piece of music sounds by the inversions you're using. Nifty additional tip there. Um, 
Do I want to go into melody now? Yeah. Um, C sharp. Okay. Um, I suppose I could talk about this as well. So, note choice for melodies is obviously really important and whether you choose to use a minor scale or a major scale is going to have an impact on the overall feel that you're going for and the emotional impact that your music has on its listener but it's a little more nuanced than major and minor for example you can have a triumphant heroic sounding thing by having a melody that goes upwards and similarly you can have something a little more disheartening or serious if it descends and that's in addition to it being major or minor so we're in minor at the moment uh, C sharp, let's create a melody that ascends. Uh, I'm just going to guess. Just going to add some motion to those. So here is our upwards melody. Let's hear it. A is bothering me a little bit. Why is that A bothering me? That's a bit better. <laughs> Let's try that again. So here is our upwards, uh, joyful, happy, positive melody, even though it's in the minor key. And then let's do the same thing, but we're going to go down. Uh, so let's go, mm, let's do the same, a similar thing, but we're going to descend. I think. Yeah, I think something like that. Let's go. And then we repeat. Now let's contrast that happy ascending melody with this descending melody. If that was in time, that'd be better. Let's contrast that positive upwards melody with a downwards melody. And obviously there, um, there's not a lot of difference, but the overall feeling, hmm, they're not massively different because we're using the same notes, we're using the same basic structure and rhythm of the melody, but the overall feeling is much more sorrowful, much more serious, introspective for this one compared to the happy upwards melody. How about that? Uh, so I'm going to swap between those two. Actually, no, I'm going to write something completely different, I think.
that needs to be in C sharp, really. Yeah, that's quite nice. One of those is wrong. Let's give it a try. Let's move on to, oh yeah, uh, let's do this. So any track I use, any instrument that isn't drums and bass, um, I will put a high pass on. So this organ, for example, you can see that our fundamental frequency is here. But actually, we have all of this information below it that we just don't need. Now, I've done that, and there's no discernible change, but it's the kind of thing that actually, once you get to the mastering process and the finished mix, it's going to be a real pain to try and clean up all that low-end mud. You just don't need it. So the same for the synth. Let's take a look. So this one we can actually go a little higher with. It's an almost imperceptible difference, but uh, once you get to trying to polish up and finish your track, you uh, you have a lot less mess and clutter in that low end. It allows the bass and uh, drums to really come through. Of course, ideally you'd spend more time making your music than I did there. It's not my, not my finest work. That's allowed. You can have off days. Okay. Next piece of advice is about um, room tone. Where's it gone? Okay. So I like to recreate room tone, the kind of sounds that you get when you're with a group of people in a room playing music together, you know, like in the good old days or whatever. So what we're going to do is we've got a effect send here. We're going to send a little bit of every instrument to that effect send. We're going to go at minus eight decibels from every instruments and then inside of this we're going to do two things uh, we're going to add an EQ and a reverb the EQ is just going to be used to uh, get rid of some of the low end so for example we have a look We have quite a lot going on in the low end and we don't really want to add to that because otherwise it's going to get a bit cluttered. So I'm just going to do that. Perfect. And then we're going to find, I don't know, some kind of room, tiled room. And we're going to put it to 100% mix. We're going to go maybe 1%, 1 millisecond there. Let's have a listen. And then we have room tone that we can dial in and out. Thank you. 
So just have a listen to it on compared to off. This is without it. And with. It's the sort of dis difference that you can't really put your finger on why it sounds different, but it just feels more full. It feels more complete and uh, dare I say homely. There you go, room tone. Room tone. Um, okay. So I'm gonna put that there. I'm just gonna rename that for the benefit of uh for the benefit of the uh screen cap that was what 43 cool um let's let's put that to maybe minus four so it's not uh all up in the way um i'm going to change the organ to a piano for this next tip um, need to change the icon, don't we? Otherwise, the whole thing's ruined. There we go. And let's go contact. And let's go the giant, I guess. I like the giant a lot. Cool. Uh, let's. Do we want to develop this idea? All I'm going to do is oops, randomly select some of these and uh, make them just feel a little bit like they're actually being played. Yeah, like that. I'll pull that one forward. We're going to change the, uh, the duration of some of these as well. And this is all just uh, trickery and lies and deceit. There we go. Let's budge some of them out. There we go. Uh, let's also take... Now, nah, let's just keep it so it's right hand. Bust forever on uh, Mixer. How's it going, man? Uh, so we're going to loop this section. Now, tell you what, let's make it a bit more piano-y. Uh, so let's take... The tonics, the root notes, and we're going to put them uh, octave lower, actually. Duplicate. And then... Um, yeah, we'll get rid of those in-between E chords. Passing chords, I guess. Yeah, something like that. And we'll get rid of those as well. So we just have a really nice, simple, simple phrase there. Uh, let's go fifths in the left hand. Because we can. Yeah. And then let's put these octave lower just so it's kind of clustered chords. Cool. I uh, will make it slower because it feels a bit rushed at the moment. So what we're going to do now is share a really fun trick for a kind of horror and stuff. So we have a I oh know it says organ. Let's do something about that. It's probably an easier way to change that, but I don't know it yet. I tend not to bother. Let's go there. There we go. So we have a four bar piano loop. Now, 
yeah, let's do something different. Let's. Uh, I've changed my mind again. I'm like that. Um. Let's go. Let's make it twice as long because I want something kind of eerie for this. And then let's go as well. Let's move that one down. Minus seven for fun. And let's also put the... Where is it gone? Sustain pedal on. For fun, again. And up again. How does it sound? Cool. So, we have a four bar piano phrase. Not the most inspired thing in the world, but it is piano. We're going to make it sound way, way spooky. We are going to add an effect send. A stereo effect sound. And we're going to call it spoopy. Because that's what it's going to be. Spoopy. And we're going to send this to spoopy. Uh, inside of spoopy, we're going to do two things. We are going to add... Um, two instances of reverb and an instance of vibrato in between if I can find it cool so let's turn off uh, the reverbs for the moment and we're going to turn the vibrato so it's kind of noticeable but without being in the way that's quite nice but slower now this at the moment is basically a chorus effect but what we're going to do is we're going to add an instance of reverb before the vibrato and we're going to put that to about 30% and then the second instance is going to be after the vibrato. And we're going to have that much, much longer. Five seconds. And that's going to be almost entirely reverb. Let's have a listen now. You can then change the rate of the vibrato to suit. But it's, it's a little bit more unnerving than having just an out-of-tune piano or like an old-timey gentleman's piano. It's, uh, it's a little bit more upsetting than that. Cool. I'm going to get rid of that last power cord there. I'm going to put that over here. Uh, I'm going to duplicate this. And I'm going to get the old keyboard track back as well. If I can find it. It was the Scarby Pianet, I think. Uh, bubbles? I don't know. Cool. Uh, let's turn that into a keyboard of some kind. I will put the piano off slightly to the left, keyboard quite far off to the left, synthesizer slightly off to the right. So our overall mix is this. <laughs> I'm going to put the 
I'm going to put that all up a bit, actually. Grab the whole thing. So for this next sip, I sort of need to make a more complete sounding uh, piece of music. Uh, yeah, let's do it. So we've got a little intro here. Let's come up with a little drum pattern. I'm also going to repeat that section. Um... Um, let's have another section after that. Um, let's alter the drums. I'm sort of guessing at this point, by the way. Uh, cause the point isn't actually what I'm writing. The point is the tip that I'm going to get to in a minute. So don't worry too much about the specific things I'm doing, I promise it doesn't actually matter that much. I mean, in general, everything I do matters a little. That'll work. And then this. Oops, that wasn't what I meant to delete. Uh, need a different keyboard part. Uh, I don't know. Awful. Uh, C sharp is R because it's an inversion. Come on, Taylor. Oops. Uh, let's set that to eighths. There we go. Do the James Bond thing there. Um, what am I trying to do? That'll do. How does it sound? That'll do. Um, let's change. I need some kind of bridge. That'll do. Uh, and then let's go. Yeah.
Uh, let's just change this to C. That'll do. Um, so, next piece of advice. So, people seem to use colors on their tracks in Cubase, which kind of makes sense. It's kind of easy to navigate. You can see where all your chords are because they're red. See where the drums are because they're orange. I actually prefer to color things according to the section, so vertically rather than horizontally. So let's say we've got, uh, these are verses, so I'm going to color them orange, and then we've got a chorus here. I don't know, I'm just applying random names to these sections. We've got a bridge here, that can be turquoise, and then we've got an intro, which is based on this, but not quite, so let's have it a slightly different color. And um, this basically allows me to navigate much easier. You can do things like, oh, let's say you've got a drum fill uh, here. Let's change that to a slightly darker color so you can see, oh, there's a change in that section there. I find this way of color coordinating my sections in Cubase a real time saver. Makes it really easy to navigate inside of my stupid brain. There you go. Um, what else have we got? Probably sounds like garbage, though. It's <laughs> not good music. Um, oh, let's talk about working out chords, working out bass lines from chords. Uh, so let's copy this piano. So let's say you've got a, uh, a loop of chords. Let's say you've got a few chords. Let's actually change that to be a bit faster so we don't lose quite so much time. <laughs> okay, let's say you've got a handful of chords. And they're just gonna loop for a while and you need to write a bass line. Well, one of the easiest ways to do that is to copy that section of chords and then delete everything that isn't a root note, put it down to the bass register, and hey presto. Um, something that's actually, I find, I find a really simple way to make it sound like a much more mature, interesting composition is to put in notes in between so filling in the gaps we've got a c sharp here down to a g sharp so why not put in i don't know a b fills it out a lot more and we're holding on a g sharp here for a bit don't we the chords the chord doesn't descend but we do this kind of suspension thing we go c b c but the tonic, G sharp, stays the same. Doesn't mean the bass line has to. We can mimic that kind of suspension up, down, up. And how does that sound? And again, we've got a G sharp here. We're gonna go up to a C. So let's put in another B in between. How does it sound altogether? Just a really simple tip for writing bass lines there once you've already got chords. Cool, we are making good time. Um, stacking lead sounds. Um, I wish I kept the lead from earlier. Oh well. So, we have a synth melody. 
not the most inspired thing in the world. Nothing I ever do is. We can make this sound a little more interesting. We're going to have a kind of a middle synth and then an ambient synth on the side. So the synth we want in the middle needs to be very um, nearly percussive. So we're going to do a few things. We're going to open up contact and have a look. We, we've already got quite a low attack. Let's change the release as well. We're also going to get rid of the reverb. Sounds pretty good. But it is a bit bare, isn't it? So what we're going to do now is we're going to duplicate this. Actually, no, before we do that bit. Excuse me. The last thing we're going to do there is we're going to add an insert. We are going to find... We can find the damn thing. We are going to make sure this is mono. I'm using the stereo enhancer, but I'm setting it to zero. So this is going to be perfectly central. Cool. We're also going to get rid of the room tone sand. We're just going to completely turn that off. We're going to duplicate this track. We're going to rename this top one synth mid and synth side. This one's going to have some room tone. We're going to get rid of that stereo mono maker. That doesn't make any sense. We're going to... I will come back to that, actually. Um, we're going to change the sound for this one. We're going to have something much more ambient. Um, tell you what, let's change this so... much better we're going to increase the release and the attack a little bit we're going to add reverb and echo our work is nearly complete we're going to go back to the stereo enhancer rather than being mono we're going to use this pimp my pad preset which is going to make it very stereo so now when we combine our two lead instruments We can turn the sides down a little bit. Ah, there it is. Two things I like about this is you get a nice separation. You have the everything you want in your melody, the, the really pointed, harsh attack, no release, very central. And then you've got the kind of airy, fairy, ambient, interesting stuff on the sides, out of the way of the... Uh, the kick and the snare and all of the important rhythmic stuff. Best of both worlds. It also means that you can dial in how much ambience you want with the uh, the track level. So you can go from nothing automated to crumbing gradually if you want. Or the other way around. Oh, the potential. Amazing. Didn't write down the time for that one, did I? Uh, let's say it's an hour five, maybe. Right, how many more tips do we have? That could be all of them. That is all of the tips. Can I think of anything else? Possibly not. Mm -mm 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 -mm. No. Amazing. Ladies and gents, I'm going to leave it there today. I realized that was uh, perhaps a slightly shorter stream than usual. I'm trying to be very intentional with streams these days, uh, trying to give myself a single task and then not uh, labor the point, so to speak, uh, just for the sake of time. So thanks for hanging out. I should be back on Wednesday. Um, I see no reason why I shouldn't be back on Wednesday, but who knows? Tomorrow, if you're around Tuesday the 7th, around 2 p.m., I am doing the Remain Indoors live podcast recording on YouTube. If you go to YouTube and search for Remain Indoors podcast, I am on 2 p.m. tomorrow. Thank you, and, uh, you know, bye. <laughs>